There we were listening to the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan giving his address to the UN General Assembly. Uh, he talked of uh, justice, or rather injustice, around the world. That was a common thread uh, through his uh, speech. Uh, let's get more on it from Al Jazeera's Hashem Ahabara, who is live for us at the UN. Uh, Hashem, uh, we did see uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan almost taking a, a leaf out of uh, the Israeli President's, uh, Israeli Prime Minister's book with all his show and tell slides, uh, but they were focusing very much on this common thread of injustice that ran through uh, the Turkish president's speech. Indeed, and this is something that has been reiterating over the last few years here, here at the United Nations, particularly uh, on the need to reform the United Nations and the international community to reinvent itself to be able to tackle issues like injustice and inequality, saying at a certain point that the international community is no longer able to deal with those issues. He spoke about a wide range of issues, Islamophobia, Kashmir, the plight of the Rohingya, the death of the former Egyptian president, Mohamed Morsi, the murder of the Saudi journalist, uh, Jamal Khashoggi, in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. But two issues dominated his statement today. Syria, where he said that basically his country cannot handle on its own the growing number of Syrian refugees and that the international community and the Europeans should honor the commitments made in 2013, whereby Turkey stems the flow of migrants in exchange for the European Union to provide mil billions of euros of aid to the Turkish government. He said that also his government is negotiating with the Americans the need to implement the safe zone eastern of the Euphrates. And he said specifically that the Turkish government is asking for a 30 kilometer deep security safe security uh, zone along the border with Syria to be able to combat groups affiliated with the PKK and the YPG, which is uh, uh, an offshoot, uh, a military uh, arm of the uh, SDF, considered by the Turkish government as a terrorist organization, where the Americans consider them to be strong allies in the fight against uh, um, ISIL. And also he said that the new constitutional committee, which has been announced yesterday by the United Nations Secretary General about Syria, could be a good step forward towards permanent peace. Now he spoke also about the Israeli-Palestinian issue, saying that the Israeli government over the last few decades has been expanding the settlements and the Palestinian territory at the same time has been shrinking, lashing out at the Israeli government and the international community, saying that the UN has failed to implement the resolutions it produced over the last few decades to bring about two state solutions, an Israeli and a Palestinian independent state. OK, Hashem Ahobara, thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, listening to uh, that speech with me is Sultan Barakat, the director of the Centre for Conflict and Humanitarian Studies at Doha Institute. Uh, he joins us uh, on set. Um, we both had a, a collective gasp when the first slide went up and the, the body of young island Kurdi on the beach was shown. Uh, and, and it did serve to underline the point that he was making, uh, particularly in regard to Syria, uh, that there is injustice and very few countries are shouldering that blame. Well, I think the bigger point was he wanted to remind the rest of the world of what Turkey is uh, carrying in terms of responsibility and cause when it comes to Syria. And as, as, as such, the solution that he has in mind of the security zone is something that has to be taken seriously. Of course, the United States, I think, will, will, will disagree with that. And uh, this is not a new proposal. He's put this proposal some time ago, and there's been a, a huge opposition to it, partly because he kind of mixed up uh, integrity, territorial integrity of Syria with the demand that is very much Turkish demand of the eradication of the YPG or the Kurdish Syrian movement, which is now supported by, by the United States. And also, of course, this discussion that if we secure a zone, a stretch of uh, 30 kilometers, we can have two or three million people returning. That's very unrealistic because these two or three million should really, in the name of justice that Erdogan calls for, should return to where they've come from, that you cannot just return them into these uh, border areas to be exposed for, for potential future conflict. But one important point I think he made about Syria is the threat of, uh, of Idlib. And uh, as, as you know, throughout the conflict, as, it, as they were resolving uh, issues in, in one area, to, to moving to the next, they've allowed the fighters to uh, withdraw into Idlib. And now Idlib has become a very dangerous mix of uh, 
uh, fighters who have a real uh, cause to fight for and a mix of terrorists and some extreme groups. And that could provide the pretext for the Syrian government and potentially others to act against them. And that could lead to a huge wave of displacement into Turkey again. And having said that, of course, no one denies the generosity of Turkey when it comes to dealing with Syrians. They did actually, you know, in, in real terms, they, mm. they illustrated a lesson to everyone around the world of how uh, a, a nation should really stand by its neighbors. And they've burdened a huge uh, uh, cost uh, when it comes to the Syrians. And the Syrian issue is one where the UN has been quite bogged down, has it not? We saw that the announcement of that committee um, to, to, to help sort of start rebuilding the constitution. But there's, uh, it was an announcement, but very few were hailing it as a bait. They have been through. bogged down, but that is a major breakthrough mm -hmm. that happened a couple of days ago. And uh, Guterres spoke about it earlier today. The committee, uh, it's an agreed committee, it's a Syrian, all Syrian committee, and is going to put the constitution. So if Turkey come in support of that as well, I think it will achieve uh, uh, what everyone desires, and that is the end of conflict in Syria. Okay, well, thank you very much for your analysis there. Great to get your thoughts. Um, uh, let's move on now to...